In this video, I am going to talk about complementary filter, which can be used to create the best of the both worlds in approximating angle from data coming from the accelerometer and gyroscope. The goal of my complementary filter is to weigh our overall result to take advantage the short term accuracy of gyroscope measurement and combine it with the long term stability of accelerometer. In effect, the combination is applying a high pass filter to the gyroscope and low pass filter to accelerometer. Remember that the angles are approximated and were developed assuming roll and pitch to stay under plus minus 85 degree as the trigonometry becomes more difficult when considering higher tilt angles. If you have not watched the previous video on accelerometer, gyroscope, low pass filter and sensor fusion, please check the description below. You can also visit my Patreon site to read the complete paper. So without any further delay, let's deep dive into it now. If you are new to this channel please consider to give a like and subscribe that means a lot to me a complementary filter is a kind of sensor fusion which blends multiple sensors output and create one stable output I will first work on the roll angle and then use the same algorithm to determine the pitch. From now on, I will be using actual terminology about the angle names such as pitch for x axis, roll for y axis and yaw for z axis. I already have explained these names in details in my previous video. Link is there in the description below. Let's look at what we are getting out of accelerometer. From the raw output of accelerometer, we are getting the acceleration due to gravity, which is always pointing down near to the earth's surface, when the device is stationary on the ground and no other acceleration is acting on it. In this case, as the device knows which direction is down relative to the reference frame, we determine the roll angle. The simple way I have done this is to measure the arc tangent of the acceleration vector between y and z axis and converted it to roll angle. The measurement however is not precise in short term because accelerometer measures the linear acceleration. Any other acceleration is added up to the gravitational accelerations which corrupts the data. But the accelerometer is very stable in long term because the gravity vector doesn't change over time. We may not trust accelerometer at a given moment but we have an absolute understanding of which way is down over a long time scale. At the same time, with gyroscope, the roll angle is zero when stationary on the ground as there is no angular velocity. Let's consider the initial roll angle or the current estimate of roll angle is zero. On the roll of the device, we get angular velocity. Keeping the track of the change in angular velocity, we determined how far the device has been rotated in one time step and add that value to the previous estimated roll angle. The new evaluated roll angle estimate will now become the current estimate and will be used to determine the next estimated roll angle. Let's say the initial estimate is zero and we are measuring every 100 millisecond interval or in time steps. At first interval, we receive angular velocity 5 degree per second. It means the device rolled 0.5 degree. The calculation is 5 multiplied by 100 divided by 1000 as 1 second is equal to 1000 millisecond. Similarly, at the next reading after 100 millisecond, we receive 15 degree per second. It means the evaluated roll angle will be 1.8 degree, applying the same calculation. On third reading, I got minus 10 degree per second. So the value will be 0.8 degree. And the same equations or the same logics continues. Basically, I am integrating the angular velocity to estimate the angle. It is very much straightforward and simple. This approach is also known as dead reckoning and it is very good to keep track of the motion over a short period of time. The short period depends upon the noise and the error characteristics of gyroscope. Any uncorrected bias like earth rotation or other high frequency noise will add up to the measurement. With these cumulative errors, eventually going to be a large difference between the true roll angle or the angle we estimate. As dead reckoning is a relative measurement and there is no absolute measurement that will correct the roll over time. That's why gyroscope measurement cannot be trusted for a long term. 
Now let's try to fuse these two sensors outcome using sensor fusion algorithm of complementary filter. Complementary in this sense means that we combine two measurements in such a way that completes each other. In another way we take some part of one measurement and add it to the complementary part of other so that the sum of two parts is still one whole measurement. In our case I want to keep short term benefit of gyroscope and add them to the long term benefit of the accelerometer. The best way to achieve that is to pass the accelerometer outcome to a low pass filter and gyroscope to the high pass filter and adding them up together means to complementing each other. It is complementary because the total percentage of each of the filter outcome portion should become 100%. The algorithm I follow to complement both the sensor is based on core sensor fusion algorithm. Remember the slider I explained in my previous video which is the portion of gyroscope and accelerometer will be taken based on the slider position that is preset for complementary filter. I am going to trust gyroscope in short term and accelerometer in long term. At the beginning I will have to play around to find the accuracy. To start with say 95% it means 95% trust on gyroscope and rest 5% trust will be on accelerometer. After adding it up I am getting the new angle which will be used as a current estimate for the next evaluation. By believing gyro more I am allowing the short term speed and agility to make it through but I am nudging it back to absolute down direction over time to keep the angle from wandering off. This is how I will be getting long term stability of the accelerometer. Now it's time to implement the algorithm in my code. I am using the same code from where I left in my last episode. If you are following me then you can download the source code from my patreon site. Please check the link in the description below. I will first work on the roll angle or y axis rotational angle estimation and then apply the same logic in pitch or x axis rotational angle estimation. Let me quickly recap what I had done so far in my code. I have captured accelerometer data in terms of x, y and z axis and using y and z acceleration vector I have determined the roll angle which I am calling phi or phi measure. I applied some mathematics here to evaluate the angles such as radiant to degree conversion. After that I have passed the measured value in a low pass filter with a trust percentage of the previous measurement of 95%. That gave me a filter value of roll angle which I am calling it phi filtered new. Let's look at both measured and filtered value in a serial plotter. The output I am getting from my serial plotter is after calibrating accelerometer. When the device is steady and stationary the measured angle is reported steadily and smoothly. Now if I apply the linear acceleration on y axis I can see there are some linear acceleration is detected and reported in the measured phi value. However the low pass filter output is steady although there are some amount of noise added into it. Now if I tilt the device on y axis like an aircraft is rolling then the measured value is quickly responding to the change where the low pass filter value is slowly and smoothly catching it up. The problem we identified with the low pass filter is the lag. For short term it is missing the reality however for long term it is steady and consistent as it is relying on the earth gravitational force. Now let's look at gyroscope implementation. Gyroscope returns the angular velocity. To get the angle I have applied an integration which is multiplying the x axis velocity with the delta time and summing it up with the previous measurement. Phi g is the variable where I am storing the roll angle. For details please check the gyroscope video link is there in the description below. From the output I can see in a steady state all the three outputs are consistent and smooth. If I keep the device like that for a certain amount of time there won't be any changes in accelerometer but gyroscope will deviate it from the reality due to the environmental factor. After applying roll on the device I can see accelerometer measured and gyro data is responding very fast than the low pass filter output of the accelerometer. On linear acceleration on y axis there is no impact on gyro however there is a limited impact on the filtered outcome. To implement the complementary filter on the top of the current implementation I have created a variable called roll with an initial value 0. 
For preset trust factor, I have created another variable with an initial value of 0.95. That means I will trust gyroscope 95% and 5% trust will be on my accelerometer. In the loop function, I have derived the roll angle based on the trust factor. The formula is, first I will evaluate the gyro measured roll angle based on the angular velocity and then sum up with previous measured roll angle. After that, I applied the trust factor. On the other side, I have applied the remaining trust factor on the complementary part, which is accelerometer measured roll angle. Finally, I have printed the roll in the serial plotter. Here is the output of the complementary filter. Inclining the device approximately 30 degree on either side of the Y axis, the device roll is responding very fast, unlike the accelerometer low pass filter. The performance here is a bit smooth and steady. If I roll the device to almost 70 degree and suddenly bring it down, then there is a small lag is identified. I believe this is due to the calibration. After the calibration, I could see the difference. The complementary filter is responding as the way I want it to. This is really amazing. Let's test the linear acceleration or vibration issue. Although there are slight vibration issue, but it is negligible. I can leave it with for the time being. Now let's compare the output with accelerometer low pass filter and gyroscope raw roll angle. The accelerometer low pass filter roll, I have called it phi filter new and gyroscope roll angle I called it phi g. Here from the result I can see a consistency between accelerometer low pass filter and the complementary filter. The behavioral issue of limited linear acceleration issue is same in both the filters. That means we have overcome the lag issue of accelerometer low pass filter by a complementary filter. Here is the comparison between different trust percentage 50%, 75%, 95% and 98%. From the different result, I could see increasing the trust percentage on accelerometer, increasing the linear acceleration or vibration issue, whereas relying more in gyroscope delaying the outcome. I believe we cannot achieve both the performance and quality in one filter. Looking at the outcome at different trust percentage, 95% is much better than other trust factor. I kept the device overnight and here is the result. Here I have plotted accelerometer output, low pass filter output, gyro output and complementary filter output. When I checked it in the morning, I see gyro has deviated quite a bit, but the complementary filter output is still showing the correct orientation. That's the beauty of the sensor. Now it's time to implement the pitch angle. For the pitch, similar like roll, I have created another variable called pitch and initialized it with 0. There are no changes in the trust percentage for the pitch estimation for now. I have added the gyro y-axis data with pitch and applied the trust percentage with it. And other trust percentage I have applied to the complementary part of the accelerometer theta angle estimation, which was derived from x and z-axis motion vector. Here you can observe that instead of addition, I have subtracted the value. The primary reason of doing that is angular motion direction, which was identified from the right hand rule. I already have explained how it works in my previous video. Please check the link in the description below. Finally, I have added the pitch in the serial plotter. After uploading the code, here is the output of both pitch and roll. You can see how clean and nice are the output. Pitch means nose up and nose down. Similarly, like roll, pitch is responding quite nicely. If I consider my setup is an aeroplane and it is moving forward means there is always be a linear acceleration. Such issues are not impacting the pitch angle here as well. Although there are some limitation on complementary filter like plus minus 85 degree rotational issue. For now I'll stick to it to complete my motion capture suit development till I feel to work on it more. I may try to use other filters like Kalman filter or extended Kalman filter or Magic or Mahoney filter in parallel. If I see there are significant improvement and I decide to go with it, I will create an another topic. So far complementary filter is good for me. Overall I am quite happy with that to complete the suit development. Now question is why in the definition of the complementary filter says low pass filter of accelerometer and high pass filter of gyroscope. This is not a true low pass filter what I had learned earlier. Here what I have done is I have taken some part of gyro and some part of accelerometer and then integrated them to get the whole measurement. 
A low pass filter is a filter that passes the signal with a frequency lower than a selected cutoff frequency and attenuates signals with frequencies higher than the cutoff frequencies. The accelerometer's input is passed through a low pass filter, say G of S, and the filter I pass the gyro through is high pass filter, which would be 1 minus G of S. Addition to these two is 1, means they are complementary to each other. This is the basic complementary filter and G of S could be any filter, not necessary to be a low pass filter and 1 minus G of S will be its complement. If I have used a fast order low pass filter for acceleration, then G of S means 1 over tau S plus 1, where T is the cutoff frequency and S is the sample time. It makes the complementary part to be 1 minus 1 over tau s plus 1, which is equal to tau s divided by tau s plus 1. Since the integral is 1 by s by gyro, then I can cancel out the s from the high pass filter or the complementary part and the factor the low pass filter after the summing junction. Then I get 1 over tau s plus 1. It means I am no longer converting the gyro measurement into angles at all. I am just scaling it up and then adding it to accelerometer produced estimated angle and low pass filtering the result. To tune this filter, I simply need to pick up the time constant or cutoff frequency tau for the low pass filter. Lower the tau raises the cutoff frequency which will let more accelerometer frequency in and fewer gyro frequencies. Similarly, higher the tau means lower the accelerometer frequencies and higher the gyro frequencies. This cutoff frequency tau can be adjusted via test observations and multiple simulations. This is a continuous domain implementation. In my case, I have read the gyro measurement every time step and multiply it with the time step to evaluate the angle, which I have added to existing estimated angle that was derived from the fixed fraction of the previous estimated accelerometer angle and the complementary portion of the previous gyro estimate. Let's do the algebra, where roll angle is equal to acceleration angle multiplied by 0.05 which is 5% plus gyroscope angular velocity multiplied by the time step plus angle divided by z. The whole thing I am multiplying with 0.95 which is 95% on trust. Here z signifies the delay by one time step. Now if I simplify the whole equation, what I will get here is roll angle is equal to acceleration angle multiplied by 0.05 plus gyroscope angular velocity multiplied by time steps multiplied by 0.95. The whole thing will be multiplied by z divided by z minus 0.05. The first part of the expression is the summation of the scaled accelerometer and scaled gyro measurement and the second part is z over z minus 0.95 that is the discrete low pass filter and it is very similar to the continuous domain implementation. In the continuous domain, low pass filter implementation is by tuning the cutoff frequency and in the discrete domain it is by tuning the ratio of one signal versus the other one. I hope this is making sense, if not please comment below, I'll try to explain more in details. That's all from this video, I'll go by the current implementation to proceed further. In the next video, I'll bring the magnetometer in the mix to evaluate the yaw or the heading indication. As you know, I'm also learning and my resources are either Google suggested research paper or YouTube suggested video on the topic. Based on the time spent on learning last few weeks, I have made this video to demonstrate my learning. I might be wrong or not able to explain it properly. If you could point out those problems, it will be a great help. So please comment and help me to rectify that. On that note, I am finishing this video here. I hope you like the progress and the strategy of the development. Please stay tuned for such interesting topic and the solution. Till then, stay safe and take care. Thank you for watching.